Hi everyone and welcome back to Developer Soapbox. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use one of my favorite Spring Utility classes, uh, JDBC Template, along with one of my favorite programming languages, Kotlin, to write a basic console CRUD application. So let's get started. And here's a quick list of some things you're going to need. So first you will need the Java JDK installed in your system, along with the Kotlin compiler. And second, you will need an IDE. So since Kotlin was created by a company called JetBrains, which also makes an IDE named IntelliJ, I do recommend you use this IDE. Uh, you will also it will also install the Kotlin compiler for you if you go this route. Um, so the only thing is make sure you, you do um, select the community edition when you download since it is the free edition for this product. And as usual, the best way to start a Spring project is by using uh, Spring Boot. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So let's head over to start.spring.io and generate our project. So for the project, we will leave it as a Maven project. For the language, go ahead and select Kotlin. Uh, Spring Boot, just leave the default that it provides you with. For your project metadata, just enter your group. Soapbox for me. And for the artifact, let's call this Kotlin JDBC. Um, and the last thing you're going to need is to add your dependency. So we're going to just add two dependencies. First one is your JDBC API. And this is, uh, this is essentially the only dependency you really need. The second one we're going to do is H2. And the only reason why we're going to do this is to make this project uh, fully uh, self-sufficient. Self so you don't need, you know, another database running to in order to do this this uh, tutorial. So H2 is a uh, in-memory database. And as soon as you run your project, it will instantiate the database, uh, add your data, and you'll be able to work with that uh, within your, your code. After you've added your dependencies, go ahead and click Generate in order to generate your, your project. It will essentially download a zip file. And now if you go into your downloads, there it is. So go ahead and extract this to a location. So I've extracted my files into my desktop. So here's my directory. Once you have your extracted directory, go ahead and open IntelliJ. And let's go ahead and import the project. Go into the directory where you've extracted the, the project and select that directory and click OK. Go ahead and import the project from external model and do Maven and click Finish. Once the project is fully imported into IntelliJ, go ahead and open the project, go to source, main, resources, and go ahead and open this application.properties file. And this is included with every Spring Boot project, and this is uh, what Spring uses um, for its configuration, right? So let's go ahead and add the first one is spring.datasource.url, and this will be the location for our database or the, it's essentially the JDBC URL for our database. Since it is in memory, it's just going to be JDBC H2 uh, mem to specify that it's going to be in memory only. And then the database name, which doesn't really matter since it's uh, in memory, but we'll just call it test. The second one is spring data source driver class name. And this will be org H2 driver. And this just tells Spring uh, which JDBC driver to use um, for our database. And what's really awesome about this is that even though we're using an H2 instance in this case, if you wanted to use, um, you know, a, a MySQL or Postgres or whatever you want, um, you, you could technically just change this configuration file and most things should work as is, right? So that, that's pretty awesome. Once we have our configuration, let's go ahead and write the actual code. So go ahead and go to main Kotlin, uh, your group name. So this will be different for you, but just go ahead and open the, the only KT file that should be in there. So this will be your, where your um, Spring Boot application annotation is. Go ahead and open that class. And the actual application we're going to be writing is just a very simple CRUD application, CRUD console application to manage a list of favorite beers. So this is, I've used this example in other tutorials that I've done, and I just think it's fun. So let's, let's go with that. And the first thing we're going to need is a class to map or a database rows to, right? So let's go ahead and create that. In Kotlin, this is super duper easy. So it's just a data class and then your class name 
and then your primary constructor. So I'm gonna have an ID field of type int, a name of type string, and let's do the ABV, so the alcohol content of type double. Second thing is let's go ahead and make this a, a command line application. So you do this by implementing the command line runner interface. And let's go ahead and add the unimplemented uh, methods. So it just should just be one. And then lastly, let's go ahead and inject or JDBC template. So let's go ahead and do auto wired. It's gonna be JDBC template and type JDBC template. And I did forget to put this file here. So now, um, again, Spring Boot does use the application.properties file. So essentially what it's gonna do is use the database properties that we put in there and essentially pre fully prepare our JDBC template object. So it's fully ready to use now. So we can go ahead and get started by creating a table. So let's go ahead and do execute and we'll do create table if not exists. Um, this syntax may not work with all databases, but it does work with um, H2. So let's create a table called uh, favorite beers. And it's gonna have ID of type int, name of bar car 50, and the uh, ABV, which is double. Have our table, let's uh, insert some records in there. So JDBC, same again, we're gonna use a execute method again. So it's just JDBC the execute. And before we can select our records and print them out, which we're going to be doing shortly, we need something called a row mapper, which will map our database records into a collection of beer uh, entity objects. And we can do so by using a little bit of Kotlin Lambda magic here. So let's go ahead and define an object called row mapper of type row mapper and, and that's of type beer. And we're gonna define this as, row mapper is an interface, not an actual uh, class. So what we're gonna do here is because it's a functional interface with Kotlin, it allows us to use a Lambda to define this. So the, the way it works is uh, a functional interface, if you're not familiar, is just an interface that uh, just has one method, right? So if, if that's the case, then we can provide its definition as a single Lambda, uh, function essentially. In the case of row mapper, that, uh, that single method is a method that takes a, uh, the result set and the uh, index number, right? So the, the row index. So let's do um, result set. Oh, there we go. So, so it actually helps us right here, right? So result set of result set. And just to make this easier to read though, instead of I, I'm just gonna call it index. And it is a lambda, so after the arrow, we can basically just define um, what it's gonna return, right? So it's gonna return, for each record, it's gonna return um, a beer instance, and the values for that beer instance is gonna be for the first argument. Remember, we're just following these right here, right? So result set, get int, and you provide a uh, the, uh, the name of the actual field. So the first one is ID. The second one is get string of for name. And then the last one is get double for ABV. We can now query the records by using the row mapper. So let's do that. So it's let's define a variable name results. And this is gonna be a JDBC template query and it's gonna take, uh, the first argument is the SQL statement as a string. So let's just do select star from favorite beers. And the second argument is gonna be your row mapper. So I'll just copy and paste this here and save. And to print the rows, let's do results and let's use for each. And again, we're gonna use uh, some Kotlin Lambda magic here. So for each record, let's print line that record. 
and have a little typo here it's rec and before I go any further let's see if this actually runs so far so let's just run it and see what we get and there we go so you can see that where it is printing out the two beers that we've inserted so that's great I mean it's working so far so so far we've shown you how to do a DDL so create a table do some DML insert some rows and select your results and if you wanted to do any additional operation, one way that I remember is if you want to return something, it's, it's a query method. If you want to do something that doesn't return something, it's the execute method. So uh, DML, DDL, use execute for any queries, select statements, use a, a query. And I just want to show you one more example uh, to show you how to use parameters. So let's say that you wanted to select beers where the ID is equal to some value that you're going to pass in, right? So what we're going to do is use an alternate to query that takes in the SQL statement, the row mapper, and an object array with all of your uh, arguments. So in this case, I'm just going to do array of because Kotlin is awesome and gives us that option. And I'm just going to pass in the value of one, which is my ID, which should return Lagunitas. So let's try that out. Let me go ahead and run this. And there we go. So you can see that it did print out Lagunitas. So awesome, that, that works. That's it for the basics of using JDBC template with Kotlin. Uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. If you'd like to receive notification whenever I release new material, please do subscribe. Thank you very much.